This is Mac OS Ken. The fourth wave of COVID hits Apple, another expanded protections protest letter, and notes from financial folk. It is Friday, the 20th of August, 2021. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Simply Safe. Get 20% off your system plus your first month free when you sign up for interactive monitoring service at simplysafe.com slash macOSCan. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. It was just a few days ago that Apple was reportedly trying to restart today at Apple classes in its stores. Things change quickly. Not only has the company had to temporarily close a store due to COVID-19 exposure, it looks like there will be plenty of parking at Apple Park until at least early next year. Starting with the store. A piece from Bloomberg says the Cupertino company has closed a store in Charleston, South Carolina, after more than 20 staff members were exposed to COVID-19. With the usual complement of 70 to 80 team members for a store that size, Bloomberg figures about a quarter of the location staff may have been exposed. The website for the store shows the location closed until next Monday. The report says there's a sign at the physical location alerting customers to the shutdown, Apple declined to comment for that Bloomberg piece. Moving to the macro view, another piece from Bloomberg says Apple employees won't be headed back to the office until January of next year at the earliest. In an email sent out Thursday, Deirdre O'Brien, Apple's head of people and retail, encouraged Apple employees to get vaccinated. She also said the company doesn't plan to close its offices or stores. Not sure what that means exactly. The part about the offices, I mean. If people are being told not to come in, doesn't that mean the offices are closed? Now, maybe it's people don't have to come in, not people can't come in. I know I have at least one acquaintance, not an Apple employee, for whom heading into the office is optional, not mandatory. Whatever it's doing, Apple is not doing it alone. According to Bloomberg, Apple is the latest corporation to delay its office return until 2022, following Lyft, Amazon, and Facebook, among others. A January 2022 return would mean that Apple employees will have gone nearly two years without being required to enter corporate premises since the start of the virus surge in the U.S. in March of 2020. The pushback against Apple's expanded protections for children plans continues. After worry from the EFF, Edward Snowden, an open letter from concerned citizens, reports of pushback inside Apple, and a couple of petitions asking Apple to drop its plans, news of another letter from a group of groups asking Apple not to do it. Cult of Mac has word of a letter from the Center for Democracy and Technology calling for Apple to abandon plans to build surveillance capabilities in the iPhones, iPads, and other products. Signed by over 90 organizations, the letter expresses concern that the systems Apple's setting up will be used to censor protected speech, threaten the privacy and security of people around the world, and have disastrous consequences for children. Quoting a couple of portions, Though these capabilities are intended to protect children and reduce the spread of child sexual abuse material, we are concerned that they will be used to censor protected speech, threaten the privacy and security of people around the world, and have disastrous consequences for many children. Addressing that concern, the letter reads, The system Apple has developed assumes that the parent and child accounts involved actually belong to an adult who is the parent of a child, and that those individuals have a healthy relationship. This may not always be the case. An abusive adult may be the organizer of the account, and the consequences of parental notification could threaten the child's safety and well-being. 
The organizations wrapped the letter, saying, We support efforts to protect children and stand firmly against the proliferation of CSAM. But the changes that Apple has announced put children and its other users at risk, both now and in the future. We urge Apple to abandon these changes and to reaffirm the company's commitment to protecting its users with end-to-end encryption. We also urge Apple to more regularly consult with civil society groups and with vulnerable communities who may be disproportionately impacted by changes to its products and its services. News of a strange sort of censorship from Apple. At least that's the way a new report by Citizen Lab sees it. iDownload blog highlights the findings, which say Apple is blocking certain terms for engraving on Apple devices. The company has always prevented customers from using curse words and racist language on such products, according to the piece. But Citizen Lab says the company is leveraging its engraving filters in regions such as mainland China, Taiwan, and Hong Kong, and in the service of political censorship. According to the organization, with mainland China, we found that Apple censors political content including broad references to Chinese leadership and China's political system, names of dissidents and independent news organizations, and general terms relating to religions, democracy, and human rights. The piece says blocked terms in the region include everything from politics, resist, and human rights, to the four numbers 8964, which refer to the Tiananmen Square protests, which took place on the 4th of June, 1989. Of course, it's Apple, and it's China, so you know the drill. The Cupertino company responded to the Citizen Lab report, saying, We handle engraving requests regionally. There is no single global list that contains one set of words or phrases. Instead... These decisions are made through a review process where our teams assess local laws as well as their assessment of cultural sensitivities. More news in a moment, but first a word from Simply Safe Whole Home Protection. Making people feel safe is what Simply Safe has been doing for 15 years. The passion to protect people is built into their products and their customer service. There's no hard sell with Simply Safe. You just go to their site at simplysafe.com slash macOSCan and either pick out the ready-made package you want or the individual elements that are right for you. Designing your own customized system is quick and easy. Get that set up, which is also quick and easy. Setting up my Simply Safe took about a half an hour. Yeah, get that set up and suddenly you've got a team behind you. Simply Safe has highly trained security experts ready whenever you need them, whether that's during a fire, a burglary, a medical emergency, or yes, even when you're just getting your system set up. Safety and simplicity, that is Simply Safe. As my listener, you can save 20% on your Simply Safe security system and get your first month free when you sign up for interactive monitoring service. Just visit simplysafe.com/slash macOSCan to customize your system and start protecting your home and family. S I M P L I that's simplysafe.com slash macOSCan. J.P. Morgan analyst Samik Chatterjee has done something interesting and sort of surprising. He has raised his four-month price target on Apple shares. See, most analysts do a 12-month price target. Usually, Chatterjee does as well. And yet, a note of his posted on Apple 3.0 has the analyst upping his price target on ticker symbol AAPL from $175 to $180, for December of 2021, which will be smack in the middle of four months from now. Perhaps not surprisingly, it all comes down to iPhone. Quoting his note, We continue to see Apple shares set up for multiple catalysts in the back end of the year, 
including not only the upcoming iPhone 13 launch, but also low investor expectations for iPhone and total revenue for fiscal year 2022, led by concerns relative to cycling past the peak upgrade cycle associated with 5G. Are there really people who think the 5G upgrades have already peaked? Even here in the States, that seems unlikely. Which I guess is what Mr. Chatterjee is saying. The analyst has an overweight rating on Apple's shares to go with that funky, fresh $180 four-month price target. Morgan Stanley analyst Katie Huberty says institutional ownership of Apple was up last quarter, though it's still down for the year. If you don't remember what that is, the site Investopedia says... Institutional ownership is the amount of a company's available stock owned by mutual or pension funds, insurance companies, investment firms, private foundations, endowments, or other large entities that manage funds on behalf of others. Their lack of interest in Apple has left her gobsmacked for most of the year. Well, not totally gobsmacked. In part of a note that was also posted to Apple 3.0, Huberty says she and hers attribute the lack of institutional ownership to concerns about moderating work-from-home demand, the fear that an iPhone S cycle will lead to extended iPhone replacement cycles and revenue declines next year, and continued regulatory risk. And yeah, okay, she gets that. While we acknowledge these risks, she writes... We continue to view Apple as well-positioned to benefit from 1. The growing adoption of 5G technology, 2. Continued work, learn, and play from home demand, 3. The proliferation of wearable devices, and 4. Increasing penetration and monetization of digital content and services. All of that, plus expanded financing and installment and trade-in programs that are accelerating demand outside of Apple's top five markets and driving existing users to upgrade the higher average selling price products, make her giddy. Huberty has an overweight rating on Apple's shares. Her price target on the shares is 168 bucks. Apple did a bit of crowing about Apple Card this week. The company issued a press release Thursday saying the card has been named number one in customer satisfaction among mid-sized credit card segment, according to J.D. Power. It's on your phone. How can they tell what size it is? I'm kidding. I had intended to follow up here with what the term actually means when it comes to credit cards, though neither the Apple press release nor a release from J.D. Power defines the term. Couldn't find a definition through DuckDuckGo, either. While Apple brags about being head and shoulders above the rest in the mid-sized credit card field, it has been a bad year for that segment. According to J.D. Power, mid-sized issuers experience double-digit year-over-year declines across a range of key metrics, including satisfaction with credit card terms and benefits. John Cabell, director of banking and payments intelligence at J.D. Power, says, Whether through blunt action, such as tightening credit limits at the very moment when customers were most reliant on their cards as a source of short-term funding, or through lack of customer service accessibility, credit card issuers experience declines in overall satisfaction, trust, and brand perception. Apple Card and Goldman Sachs, the bank that backs Apple Card, were a notably exceptionable combo, and they are pleased as punch about it. Apple's press release had Jennifer Bailey, VP of Apple Pay, saying, We designed Apple Card to help our customers lead healthier financial lives, so it's incredibly meaningful to see that our customers are valuing this. Being recognized as the leader in this category this year is an honor, and we look forward to continuing to deliver this product, service, and support as Apple Card expands to more and more customers across the U.S. It's weird to have these two stories happen in the same day. While Apple has temporarily closed a store in South Carolina due to COVID exposure, it has opened a new store in Miami. Well, new-ish. 9 to 5 Max says Apple Dadeland has moved from inside Miami's Dadeland Mall to a store on the mall's exterior. 
Built with Apple's latest design, writes 9to5Max Michael Stieber, Apple Daylend is brighter, larger, and more inviting. The store is currently open for walk-in visitors, though Stieber suggests checking the store's site for the latest health and safety precautions before dropping in. It's probably a good idea for every Apple store at this time. If I asked you who you thought would be a good actor to play Tim Cook in a TV show, Hank Azaria might not be the first actor to come to mind. But he is the actor chosen by the producers of the Showtime series, Super Pumped, telling the story of the ride-hailing service Uber. The piece from Variety says Super Pumped will depict the roller coaster ride of the upstart transportation company, embodying the highs and lows of Silicon Valley. The series will focus on a different major business world story each season. I wouldn't think a series about Uber would require a Tim Cook, and certainly not a Tim Cook as big as Hank Azaria. I may have to watch. And finally today, something I will watch, no question, got a trailer on Thursday. Sure, I could be talking about the Eternals, but I'm not. This second. No, I'm talking about Foundation, the television adaptation of the Isaac Asimov books coming to Apple TV Plus next month. Yes, I long for tales of a brighter future. No. Foundation is not one of those. Yet it is a story with hope. It's also got a great cast, including Jared Harris and Lee Pace, and man, the trailer is just gorgeous. You can check it out now on YouTube. Foundation starts its run on Apple TV Plus on Friday, the 24th of September. Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by me and sponsored by Simply Safe. Get 20% off your system plus your first month free when you sign up for interactive monitoring service at simplysafe.com slash macOS can. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash Mac OS can. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time... That is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.